Okay, so we are now in the Xcode and I will show you how I implemented the traveling salesman problem in Swift. So just a recap, the traveling salesman problem is a problem in which we have k randomly placed cities and the salesman that starts from the one of the cities and he has to visit all of them and go back to the same city he started and the idea behind this problem is to find the quickest way to do that. So as you may imagine, uh, the space of possible solutions for this problem is huge. It's, uh, and uh, if the number of cities is growing, it's, it's growing also pretty fast. So um, genetic algorithm is a very efficient way to find a good solution in a relatively quick time. So let's jump to the code. In the beginning, uh, I set uh, some constants like the population size, it's 20, it can be 30, it can be 40, but I just noticed that something around 30 or 20 is uh, enough. Cities count, for our problem it can be 20, uh, it will take less time to find the solution. Elite size is the constant that says that one best um, chromosome from each generation will be preserved to the next generation without any mutation, without any change. Of course, he will be taken um, as a member that can be parent for next ge generation of springs. Um, tournament size, the size of the chromosomes that will be picked to a, to a tournament uh, to create an offspring. Uh, of course, this can't be too big because if we'll choose most of uh, the chromosomes from population to tournament, then uh, each time only the fittest will be used to create an offspring and that uh, can cause us that we will lead into local minima instead of uh, just trying to find possible so solutions through the whole space. Max generation count. Uh, yeah, I noticed that even 50 is pretty good enough, but 100 gives usually uh, very uh, good results. And field size, that's just a constant to uh, present a view that will uh, visualize us the possible so solutions for each gen generation. It will be much easier for you to understand how this algorithm is working. Uh, Distance dictionary, that's a di dictionary I just used to optimize uh, the whole algorithm. So to not count the distance between each city each time we want to check that, uh, we'll keep the um, distances in a dictionary that uh, has the key, which is the uh, string created by uh, joining the ID of the first city and the second city, and then the value for, for this key will be the distance between those cities. And there are two structs we, we need for, for this problem. Uh, first one is the city, so it has ID, uh, which is needed to be able to, to find out which particular city it is. Because it could be X and uh, Y, but uh, there is a chance, really, really small, that two cities uh, are, are, are randomly placed in the same um, position. So uh, I just decided to use ID. Uh, the, the distance function, as I mentioned, we are just uh, getting the values from the dictionary. Or if there is no value for the first runs of the uh, of the process, then we just count that and add to the dictionary. Um, position, that's just a helper function. And uh, I also needed equatable protocol to be implemented uh, to just compare the cities later on. Uh, to, I will explain you why. Okay, and there is a second struct, chromosome. Uh, as I explained you in the first part of this, this video, chromosome is a current, our current solution for the problem. So it has array of cities. Uh, we used array because we, we need an order, it's important for us. And summary distance, uh, which is our uh, fitness function. So the, the summary distance, if the summary distance is slower, then it's just a better parent for next generation. Uh, yeah, there's some 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 in it, uh, and we count summary distance while we are creating the chromosome, and we have to count that once again when we mutate that. 
and there's a, a tricky part so as i mentioned in uh, traveling salesman we cannot randomly uh, switch value for one gene because uh, in each so solution we have to keep all cities and the order is important they cannot be doubled uh, and we we cannot allow a chromosome to skip any city so i i choose the the way to mutate to to just swap two genes so we are just swapping positions of two cities uh, so we are just changing the order but uh, we are still keeping the same objects in the array current best chromosome uh, it's just a variable that's being kept to uh, to present the currently best so solution uh, in the view mm, we could optimize that but it's not important in, in this case so there's the function called select parent tournament so Mm, we uh, put the population mm, to, to this function and we randomly pick a uh, couple um, chromosomes uh, which are being described by uh, tournament size in our case it's five uh, so we create a new array of, uh, of, of chromosomes of solutions uh, we sort them uh, so the, the first one is the best one and we return the first one so we uh, pick the five elements from our um, randomly five chromosomes from our population and then we return best of them uh, the next function is called is called get elite to preserve uh, so we once again sort the whole po population by the fitness function so uh, the, the the smaller is the distance the better and we drop a uh, whole uh, array except the number of elements in elite size so if the array is 20 and elite size is uh, one so we drop last 19 elements and we re return one element as an elite for next generation and that's probably the most important part of of this uh, algorithm create next generation so uh, to create a new generation we create empty array of chromosomes we append the elite from the previous generation and then uh, uh, we have a loop that's creating uh, all missing parents so in our case it will be a loop that's going uh, 19 times because elite is one and population size is 20 so we choose two parents chromosome one we select parent tournament we use select parent tournament and we we select the chromosome two and now it's the tricky part so the way to cross over them uh, i i selected a, a, an algorithm that's uh, just picking uh, randomly two places in the array and we are taking the algorithm the the cities from uh, from a sub array uh, from the uh, gene one to gene two i put them into the new uh, array and then i fill the rest with the with the uh, objects from the second parent but also checking uh, to not double the elements so we have a, a crossover start and cr crossover end because our it, it, it's important to start with the lower index and finish with the higher index so for example we have uh, uh, gene one is let's let's say that crossover start is one and crossover end is five so uh, we create a temp chromosome which is an array of cities and then we put all elements from chromosome one that are being indexed from one to five so we have already one two three four five five um, uh, cities in the temp chromosome and then we create a new chromosome that uh, we put in to cities from the chromosome two so the second parent uh, in the order they were in this parent but we also check uh, if we don't double the values so if some values are 
some cities are already in TEM chromosome, we don't add them. So the second array, uh, the new chromosome, contains all cities from in the order as S in chromosome 2, uh, except those cities that were uh, taken from chromosome 1 and are currently being stored in temp chromosome. And then we just put this temp chromosome at the po position of uh, crossover start, so they are being stored in exactly the same place that, uh, that we randomly picked. And that's our offspring. Oh, that was tough. And then we call mutate function, which uh, is randomly swapping to cities in, in, in the array, and we add this offspring to uh, our next generation. And this process is going on for 19 times. Ah, okay, so now we can go to the real implementation. So we have to create a default, default cities order. So we randomly create some cities on random positions defined by min and max pos position. Uh, I already added function to print that, so we will just know in the console that they are being created. And uh, we store them in default order. That's, that's uh, uh, immutable collection. And then we have to create initial population. So uh, we have a loop that's creating chromosomes with randomly shuffled orders of the cities. Shuffled uh, means that the elements of the array are, are being shuffled and none of them is being re replaced. And that's how we create populations. So uh, at this point, we have uh, 20 chromosomes uh, and each of them has randomly shuffled a uh, list of cities to visit. Then there is a helper UI view. Um, honestly, I think that it's, it's pointless to explain that uh, because that's not important for this algorithm. Uh, of course, all source code will, will be uh, available for you so you can analyze that. It's not optimized at all. And then to just show the progress, I decided to run the uh, process of generating next generations in the background and uh, we'll just create a new TSP view, so UI view um, on my thread to just update. And as you see, that's the, the first so solution. The summary uh, length of the roads was 7574 and then we'll just go through the old generations uh, and as we see, it's already the distance is already dropping. It's less than 6000. Uh, so, yeah, we have a uh, pretty efficient algorithm. So, yeah, let's wait for the algorithm to finish. We can finish the video at this point. Uh, I see that the algorithm has some kind of problems to... to uh, optimize it further uh, but of course if you will wait uh, long enough I think that uh, yeah the cities some cities can be switched and yes yeah, some of them can be swept and uh, the solution might be better but yeah I think that the solution is probably good enough for us and it's definitely a uh, proof that uh, it's a very efficient way because we started from uh, over seven and a half thousand and we are currently at three thousand uh, the, the the length of, of the, the road and it took us three minutes on a, I don't know three year old MacBook Pro so <laughs> that's very efficient algorithm okay so uh, the presentation and the source code for the Swift solution will be linked below the video. If you have any questions, any comments, feel free to ask me or let me know about all your con concerns or, or your thoughts uh, below the video. As usually, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.